Banditos. Imagine a world where Breaking Bad's Walter White, also known as Heisenberg, mates with a Terminator and has a hybrid human-robot man-child. What would they name it? Habsburgenator. And this is his build. Hit like if unique and effective builds are for you. Comment Habsburgenator to support the channel. Ready? Right now you've all probably figured out that it's easy to make an all red, blue, or even a yellow build. You probably know that balance builds, on the other hand, aren't so easy to make in the Division 2. That's because it's important you don't marginalize the most effective attributes for your survivability. But when you get the equation right, these builds become highly effective and way more exhilarating than the common setups. And this build is definitely a hybrid. In fact, it's not my first hybrid one-shot kill skill build. I've made several this season, thanks to the new gear that season 11 has brought us. But with this one, I wanted to make it stand out from the others. I didn't want to just put out another hybrid skill damage build that can one shot kill. And the curve we made to this build was in the balance of the configuration. We decided to go with a 3-3-3 core concept, something that was popularized in the original Division game. It's sort of like taking the Memento backpack and turning it into an entire build you know, because the Memento's got a balance of all three cores and its short-term and long-term benefits are also balanced between defense, offense, and skills. It's not the first balance build we've made, of course, but this one is a little bit more strict to that 3-3-3 concept. In the past, before season 11, I wasn't a huge fan of hybrid sniper builds. That's changed thanks to the additional options we have. And what I'm finding now as of season 11 is that they make some of the best hybrid builds. And that's because inherently they come with all of the damage that you need and and more. You can redistribute the overkill to be even more effective in this game. And remember when I use the word survivability, I'm not talking about like armor, okay? Because there's so much more to survivability than just armor. Actually, the largest slice of the survivability pie is actually your time to kill. So that's the most important thing. For any of these hybrid builds, if you're trying to be a damage dealer, then you need to make sure that you start there and that your damage is effective. You need to have an effective time to kill and an effective time to clear your content. And the time to clear part isn't just effective time to kill. That's where your fast time to heal comes into play. And there's lots of ways to do that in this game, including armor on kill, armor regen, repair skills, and don't leave out utility. You see, things like weapon handling or more shots on target are a big deal. That's actually more of your offense. So stability, accuracy, weapon handling in general are all things you might want to consider putting on your build. And I've noticed on many builds, they actually improve my gameplay performance. Beyond what I would say, the obvious, you know, when you're in the testing range and you stand there pointing at a paper target that doesn't move and standing five feet away from you, it's really easy to say, hey, this build feels good, it's effective. But when you get out in the field notice notice how many shots aren't landing on target and notice how difficult it is at different ranges and that's where sniper skill damage hybrid builds slash tank build because this is all of those come in handy because it has a very far reach so we can play close and personal and at deep ranges and that's what makes a sniper one shot kill hybrid skill build stand apart from our other hybrid builds that rely on things like assault rifles because it's not only our sniper build that can have a far reach but also our skills because we can ascend our attack drone to targets that are on the run or hiding behind cover. So this is called a Habsburg hybrid because when I set out to create this build initially, I wanted to build it around season 11 elements, especially the Habsburg guard. So that's the theme of this build, okay, is to ensure that we're including season 11 things. And I have two out of three key season 11 elements. Habsburg gives us 15% headshot damage. As you can see, I'm running two pieces. The second piece gives us marksman rifle damage, which isn't actually critical but it is nice to have we'll talk about that more in a few minutes but on this one i have weapon damage headshot damage weapon handling and a protection from elite spawn now mine is at god rolled status but don't worry if yours is not a 12 percent protection from elites will work just fine so here's the second piece of hadsburg the one that's given this marksman rifle damage i have weapon damage and the same stats weapon handling and headshot damage don't sleep on your weapon handling your other option could be skill damage or armor regen there but i discourage you from putting on too much skill damage we'll also get into that in just a moment 
moment. Okay, for more utility, Brazos. So remember, we want three, three, three. So three red cores, three blue cores, and three skill tiers. As you can see, the bottom left meter, we have three skill tiers, and this is helping. So Brazos, one piece is giving us skill haste. The second piece opens up that skill tier. We have armor here, headshot damage, and weapon damage. So that's another weapon damage core. That's the third one we've seen so far. Now, it's not a true core, but it's like a core. So that's three so far. Here's our second piece of Brazos with our second skill tier. It's got weapon handling and headshot damage. At least have headshot damage there. That weapon handling can also be armor regen and skill damage if you must. The chest piece. Here is our second armor core. We have 1% armor regen, headshot damage, weapon handling, and another protection from elites mod. And the memento, which is topping off our tiers. So that is our fourth weapon damage core, our third armor core, and our third skill tier. So it's technically a four three three build you can change that around if you want to but as an alternative i would say add another armor core i would stray away from adding a skill tier we're gonna get into that my play style plays into the short-term and long-term buffs but yours may not and that's okay the long-term buffs are just fine for this build so don't sweat it if you're not getting the short-term buffs we'll talk about your options there so we get five percent weapon damage per red core we got three legitimate red cores and then we have the bonus red core on the holster so that means every time we get a kill and pick up a trophy, we're going to get 5% per red core, which is 15% weapon damage. And then for a long-term buff, when we get all 30 stacks of mental trophies, we're going to have 30%. Easily, you can have one trophy active, or hopefully you do. And that's going to be 45% weapon damage just right there. And of course, that can increase in increments of 15%. For bonus armor, we get 10% per blue core. We got three of those, three legitimate blue cores. So that's 30% bonus armor. Remember, bonus armor is armor on kill with the memento backpack, but it only lasts for 10 seconds. Either way, that's 30% armor on kill and temporary armor that lasts for 10 seconds. And that's a long time. Use it. You want to take damage to that blue armor. And for a long-term bonus, we're going to get 3% armor regen right there. And add that to the bellstone chest piece. We're at 4%. That's healthy healing. And skill efficiency. Remember, we got three skill tiers. So that's 15% skill efficiency when we grab a fresh trophy. And then 30% skill efficiency at full stacks. So that's additional power to our drone and turret. Turret, it's a three skill tier turret. And then this is our drone also three skill tiers uh, i have the mods that you would expect to put on here basically damage and duration let's look at the primary weapon so the one i'm running as a primary this is going to surprise you it's the srs a1 you can also use the srs covert it's very close to the same the difference is the underbarrel mod selection but basically the same love this and i totally recommend it it's going to surprise you so i got 15 percent stability instead of a scope now you can totally put a scope here if you want to so if you're a relaxed player definitely put on the digital scope and get 45 percent more headshot damage that's gonna give you more room to do other things on your build also and then i have stability here and more stability there one of the greatest things about stability is that it helps eliminate your weapon sway and that's a big deal especially if you're playing from cover because the further your targets are the more of a nuisance that weapon sway is and then uh for the mag i decided to go with stability here this is now how i'm always running this weapon you can go for additional rounds but the reload isn't that bad and seven rounds is a lot for a sniper that can one shot kill of course and for the talent, I'm running Determined. After killing an enemy with the headshot, the next shot landed on an enemy will be a guaranteed headshot. Now, they did change this. So you have to go headshot, body shot, back to a headshot, and then back to a body shot, headshot, body shot. I still recommend this as a talent. It's a very strong talent on any sniper build, even with the changes. You don't have to run this, though. This isn't what's making the build work. But you don't really need heals, and you definitely don't need power. What I would not do is put on more power here. That would just be a waste. It would be an evaporation of a talent into the air the other option that you could consider is preservation i wouldn't mind that and then if not that you could go future perfection for more skill tiers preservation gives you 20 percent armor on kill over five seconds which is like four percent armor regen per second if you're looking to be part of a strong positive community then i have you covered join texas discord we're not elitists and we're so much more than just clans and raids texas discord continues to grow as the central hub for the player base that loves this game and wants to see it thrive and if you love builds this is the spot also join texas players club to support the channel the cause while getting access to member perks and extra content like gaming music playlists click the join button below
Yeah, so I love this no scope. It's fast, it's easy to handle. I can actually run and gun with this thing, but I expect all of you aren't playing that way. So definitely put on the scope if you're more comfortable doing that. That's not gonna really change anything on the build, but it does give you more options on what you can do and change around to suit your play style. So don't forget to do that with any of my builds. Remember, I make them to perfection, but that perfection is subjective to my gameplay style. And so if you're not as aggressive as me, you can lose more armor off the build and break the 333 combo and put on more damage if you want to or even more skill tiers now earlier i said i didn't want to put on more skill tiers on the build personally and that's because in hybrids you sort of get into a competitive environment with your skill and you are getting the 30 percent skill efficiency off of the backpack and you're buffing those skills when you grab a fresh trophy which is giving you 15 percent more skill efficiency remember skill efficiency includes skill haste skill duration skill health and skill damage the problem is i don't want my skills to be too strong that's because the most powerful thing about your build is your one-shot kill capabilities. You don't need any ammo to do that. You can run all five directives and perform just the same. Where skills can go on cooldowns and then break and then you got to get the scavenge skill components to get them back up if you decide to run all directives. And I like giving you guys builds for all directives, especially for those looking to farm XP and rank up their character or get more resources. Very useful when we have global events, by the way, because you also get red stars, which is an avenue to acquiring the best gear in this game so hopping back to the chest piece real quick with headhunter you need to make sure you have 150 percent headshot damage if you do then you're gonna get a damage cap of 1250 percent of the last headshot killing blows damage on my primary i have 187 percent headshot damage that's me not running that scope and if i did that would give me an additional 45 percent headshot damage what i want you to notice is my stability 127 percent stability on this beast of a sniper and that is a very good stat so you know as far as total weapon handling we're at 25 percent and the tac 50 is really important that's 278 percent headshot damage there's a mechanic to how this plays so basically you're going to be using your nemesis and your tac 50 to fully proc your headhunter chest talent to its 1250 percent cap in a single kill once you do you're going to switch back to your primary weapon and carry forward your chain killing and you might have noticed that i'm not running damage to armor nor damage to targets out of cover on my secondary attribute on purpose that is the stat i re-rolled to stability I'm starting to do that on almost all of my snipers and that's because i realized because i play into the mechanics to get the fastest route to chain killing by using the tac 50 of the nemesis my primary weapon doesn't need any additional damage it's one shot chain killing all the elites and it might have been obvious but i am running the nemesis as my secondary weapon so where i'm using the nemesis is mostly on very tanky targets like the heavy gunners with helmets or bosses and i'm using this when i very start my day because I don't have tech 50 ammo. One of the unanticipated benefits of this build is that you're going to earn specialization ammo very quickly. One of the reasons why you want to run sharpshooter so you can take advantage of that perk. So you can get 15% increased stability from sharpshooter. That's already into our stats. We get 15% increased headshot damage also in our stats. But if you look at here for that 50 cal ammo, killing enemies with headshots, which is all we're doing, adds two to the bar, except when using the tech 50 and every 20 seconds you generate ammo for your rifle and your marksman as well that does make it easier when playing with all directives however you might need a killer or two with your pistol to get things going to make sure you have a little extra ammo using your skills with this is fun because one of their primary duties is to cloak you and that happens because the enemies are so distracted by your skills you can run out of cover and basically get up to the enemy point blank and execute them so they pull aggro and it basically makes you invisible in many situations and then when a very tanky target or a boss comes out you send your skills to that target so you don't use your headhunter buff on them until you've eliminated all of your other targets that you can one shot kill and by that time when you turn your attention to the boss he's been whittled down enough where you'll be able to one shot kill him also which is why you don't need additional damage hey if you guys didn't know i do have a playlist dedicated to the best hybrid skill builds in this game of all varieties check that out too try this super and holy tech 9 smg build Follow me.